girl, stop playing. Welcome back to another episode of the Girl Stop Playing Podcast. It's your favorite homegirl, Coriel, here to encourage you to stop playing with your potential and start working for what you want in life and in love. You already know that I believe you can make the money and you can get the honey. You can have it all as long as you are willing to work. And it is my pleasure to bring y'all another working woman who is doing the damn thing. But before I introduce you to today's guest you gotta make sure that you like this episode comment below and tell us what you enjoyed the most and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any of the amazing conversations that we have here on girl stop playing before the show ends we are going to get into my new card game pull your card which adds a little bit of sizzle a little razzle dazzle to your girls night your game night or you know your family reunion however you like to get down you can definitely add pull your card to the mix by logging on to pull yocard.com now today's guest i get to introduce y'all to the beautiful melissa mitchell she considers herself to be a master manifesting artist she's worked with vogue spanx nike peloton coach footlocker ford and many many more showcasing her beautiful creations welcome to the show melissa thank you for having me i am look at her y'all I'm talking about, I had a, I'm like, I can't just wear something plain. I mean, I'm not as colorful, but I had to put on a pattern or something because yes. I knew you was going to show up you already know. and show out. Yes. I love it. On brand, always. 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 The name of your business, I didn't want to butcher it. Okay. Is so it? think about the letters A, B, uh -huh. and L. So A, B, L. It's French. Really? Yes, it's French. Oh, that is not what I was going to say. <laughs> you going to say A-B-L-E? I, -L -E? I, I was going to say a, B a bill is what I was going to say. So it's French. The real the real, the real way you say it is um, a bé. Okay. But, but we from, I'm from Miami, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I say A-B-L. Got it. <laughs> it. There's a meaning behind it. It means honeybee okay. in French, and Melissa means honeybee in Greek. Ah. So my parents are very intentional mm -hmm. about naming me Melissa because um, my dad was studying the productivity of bees, and little known history fact is that bees are not supposed to fly. Wow. Um, okay. Ergonomically, they're too heavy, but they don't know that. They just know they got these wings and, and they're going to fly. Them. Mm -hmm. And so I was always little when I was small. My dad was like, I became a bee over, over time. And so the naming was so important to my family. I was like, when I have my next business, I will pay homage to both my parents. I, I named it ABL. love that. Okay, so I'm glad we started yeah. that because my little confusion, confusion just gave y'all a little lesson. <laughs> I love that. The intentionality yes. is yes. everything. So we were talking before um, before we started the show about the fact that you are my soror. I am. You are a fellow HBCU I graduate. Am. She went to FAMU, y'all. Y'all know I roll my eyes when I say fam you. <laughs> but she be at all our stuff. I be, and listen, she married a rapper. Listen, I secretly. And she asked me about homecoming. I secretly. So I be hating on fam you. It's a friendly hate though. Yes. It's a friendly yes. rivalry that TSU yes. has. Shout out to Tennessee State University. But we have a friendly rivalry. I think it dated back to like the Atlanta Classics yeah. and all of the things. But I have to say. Nobody does it like FAMU, especially here in Atlanta. We don't play. Y'all little FAMU Lee or whatever y'all. We don't play. Y'all don't, do, don't play. And the yes. school spirit, the school pride that y'all have. Like, I asked her what she going to homecoming. She's like, huh. What do you, like, what Girl, do you think? What? Did you what wake up this would morning? I be doing? Yeah, like, what else do you would have I be on a, doing? Do you have braids in your hair? I <laughs> love, yeah. I love it. So what made you, and you said you're a Miami girl. Yes. So, I, you know, being from Florida, yes. I feel like that probably influenced your decision to go of specifically course. to FAMU. But what would you say was, like, your motivation to pick a HBCU mm -hmm. and then to pick FAMU? Well, I'm a third generation Rattler. So my well, great you know, my great uncles were uh were drum majors. My dad was the first DJ. That's why I love it. Well there it. you ain't have I a choice, it. huh? Well, I did have a choice. I applied to Spelman, to Clark, and to Howard, but my dad was like, I mean, you can apply where you want to. We going to homecoming. You, go, you know, you, if yeah. you get in my car, yeah. this is my first yeah. stop and my yeah. last stop. So yeah. I was like, Let me go where all the car is stopping. You know? Um, but I fell in love with FAMU over time and I fell in love with how my father was in love with the university. Mm -hmm. Um seeing the anytime we had anything and this is back in the 80s mm -hmm. anytime my dad had a project or an idea he made a phone call because back in the day you couldn't get on instagram mm -hmm. he made a phone call and it was nothing within a few days to have everything put together from calling a rattler and yep. so fast forward to 2000 when it's my time to apply um 
I didn't have a scholarship. And so I was like, well, I guess I got to go somewhere else. So my dad said, no, we're going to drive to Tallahassee. And so we talked to somebody. So we talked to the president of the university. He said, get that baby some money. We you sat know. in the office all day. Um, and he said, no, we're going to give her a full ride. So whatever she needs, she'll be taken care of. I love when it came it. to housing, we made a phone call. When it's time to the sorority, um, my parents came and set me out for probate. And so... FAMU has been in the fabric of just who I've become. And even today, I mean, if I come out with anything, I can guarantee the Rattlers are going to help me sell it out. I, so this, again, <laughs> this is what I love. So when I say yes. it's a friendly hate, I be hating yes. a little bit because I secretly wanted to go to FAMU. Yes. That was too expensive. Your girl couldn't get no uh, okay. in, in-state tuition, so I had to go where the scholarship dollars was at. But when it comes to just the connection that yes. y'all have, the um, the little be-out days y'all be having, all the things The little big be-out days. Little, little, okay. You you know when people hate, they got to say yeah. the love. The little the love, your little friends. Yeah, 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 yeah. But y'all really do it. And the yes. relationships, it does not end when you graduate. It's like crazy. the connections y'all have, the support you have. So when it comes to you as an entrepreneur, you know, mm-hmm. the business that you've established, how would you say, you know, attending an HBCU? Because everybody out there is not going to have the privilege of going to FAMU specifically. That's okay. That's okay. But there are plenty of other HBCUs for you to choose from. Just, yes. just, just choose one. Or FAMU. Yeah. Uh-huh. Or, or just go to FAMU. Or just go to FAMU. But my <laughs> advice when I think about my son is like, I'm not going to force you to go to TSU yeah. or FAMU, but you're going to in HBCU. You know, yeah, that's a preference. Them. There's plenty of them. But what, how would you say it's benefited you in your business? Um, I just remember my freshman year walking onto the campus and immediately being embraced by staff. Um, Baby girl, your dress too short. Mm-hmm. Or like, it wasn't like a, a judgment. It was mm-hmm. an immediate, let me make you better. Auntie vibe. Um, immediately. So if I, if I didn't do well on a test, it was off the record. Like, you know you don't got an F, but you can get if you do X, Y, Z. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's the it's the hand-holding, not to, to coddle you, but to make you better. It's the professors that are all, you know off, off the clock that are still showing up for you at your events, um, that are writing recommendation letters for other things, that are, I, I remember getting Public Relations Student of the Year, and I was like, this lady don't even like me. She said, I've liked you the whole time, mm-hmm. but I knew if I was tougher on you, I saw the It'll effect that it had on you becoming yeah. better. And so that same teacher full circle, I ended up meeting her after gra- on graduation. She helped me get some things done. And so it really prepared me to be an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Um, there was nothing I couldn't do without word of mouth. I was running campaigns. Um, I was a campaign advisor for friends. I was a, a, a historian. And now when I do my media stuff for Instagram and all these different social media things, I know how to do it. Because mm-hmm. I was trained with those tools. And so in HBCU, specifically FAMU, has taught me to own the room. Um, don't be afraid to stand out, yes. obviously. Um, speak very eloquently, speak directly, and just know how to maximize my time. Mm-hmm. Because when it came to set Fridays, everything had to stop. Mm-hmm. So that means Thursday night, I had a hard stop with all this homework, whatever y'all got going on. By 12 o'clock, we need to have everything picked out. And so it really made me have to say, I want to be this kind of person, and this is what it takes. And so yes. I've been doing that for 20 plus years. So I've been ready since then. And I feel like the... HBCU experience for black yes. black people, women yes. and men, yes. it's one of a kind. It's irreplaceable, truly. and it really, truly is. I mean, unless you live in Atlanta, which is black, it's black, like black, being, black. It's like being an it's HBCU. It's like the right, HBCU grown up yes. style. <laughs> but you don't often or anywhere else really no. have an opportunity to really be surrounded by black excellence and, and black on every level. Yes. You know, from the locals to the leadership yes. to and everybody in between. Yes. There's not many other, I don't know of any other experience or opportunity where you can no. just see black in so many different lights yeah. but such a supportive such a family and so um shout out to Deion sanders because he's definitely like shining a new Listen. light on hbcus because we got like shade yeah so much so you know in terms of like well we have our facilities are less yep. than and you know all of the things and i feel like it's it's finally our time to shine i love the fact that and it's uh, it's a little overwhelming that everybody has an hbcu initiative but i love that it's now a, a marketing tactic mm-hmm. right um, Use us in a good way. One of my mentees mind. just came out with the, she designed the FAMU Dunk, the mm-hmm. new Nike mm-hmm. shoe. And our, of course, our shoe, I think, I want to say it sold out. Mm-hmm. Um, I did too. TSU got okay, a little y'all shoe. Got a okay, shoe. we got a little shoe. But what I love about it is that opportunities are coming to us that we deserve, right? Yes, not just we've we been black, deserving. Just, and so now yes. the highlight is like, wow, this all of this talent is coming from these places that we once shunned. And so we're using it to our advantage, yep. you know, because I we I talk to my friends all the time. It's like, uh, is it is it cliche or is it convenient? I said, whatever it is, we're going to get this. We're going to use it. Yeah. And so I love that now when I went to FAMU, um, Different World was my show. It still mm-hmm. is. And so I couldn't wait 
to go to the utopian society of where my dorm leader was black, a black Everybody, girl. Everybody, top to you bottom. Know, I get to see the sorority stepping on camp. And this is what really happened when I got to mm-hmm. fam. I was like, wow, I'm in a different world. This yes. is exactly what it is. Yes. So it was so exciting to experience that and now to see... Because there's no real TV show now. Right. So now social media is the TV show mm-hmm. that they have to look at. And so now kids get to see the AKAs coming out at every school. You see, they come out with a, pr- a fully produced mm-hmm. probate. Mm-hmm. Where back in the day, we had to hide behind bushes. Right, right, AKAs. right. Yeah. So now they're getting to know Soros in a special way versus trying to follow them around campus. Like right, to do. right, right, right. Um, so now it's, it's, a, it's an interesting way to see how HBCUs are now on a different platform, but mm-hmm. in a good way. Because you yes. can see all the good and the bad. But to see, hey... I can go to this school and get this experience, and now they get to see it in real time. Every well time. deserved, well deserved. Yes. So, have you always been? Yes, I have. Melissa Mitchell, colorful. I have, and so every time I have someone int- introduce me, I say my name is Melissa A. Mitchell, right? Okay. And so my dad. Was I Michael apologize. A. I'm put some respect oh, on no, your no, name. Oh no, 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 no! I say that because. I like people to say my full name to have the full experience. And so my dad was Michael A. Mitchell. My sisters are both Monique A. Mitchell and Melanie A. Mitchell. And so that's our homage to our father who passed away. So he didn't have any boys. So we all have his initials. Mm. And so even when I was little, my mom said, even back to preschool, I would beg to wear these hot pink cowgirl boots with my school. Year. This oh, is like, so this being you. So this is like at three. My mom's <laughs> like, girl, just let her wear the boots. And so I was so adamant. Then I had to bring the members only jacket. So mm-hmm. let her wear the blue jacket and the pink boots. And so... My mom said there was just something different about me even then. Even when it was time for um, for our middle school prom, I didn't want to wear a black dress. So she let me go buy two dresses. One was zebra print. One was black. And so I trimmed the... I didn't know how to sew. So I trimmed the black dress with and hot glued the zebra. All Come on, it. hot glue. Added, added zebra to the hat. Had on a cowgirl hat. Girl, it was extra. And the shoe. And so I, that was my only way to ensure that I wouldn't look like anybody else. Mm-hmm. And I've always been the custom queen. Like, oh... If they're wearing black, how can I bring in? Yeah, how can I do else? it a little how different? How can I do this? And so even when it came to the sorority, they're like, all right, now you got to tone that down. I'm like, yeah, but no. Mm-hmm. And so they- I tone it down in my way. I tone it down a little bit so I get these letters. Mm-hmm, I'm going to mm-hmm. go back to the other girl. And so it was so amazing to see in photos and talking to my old friends. They're like, you were always extra. Like, th- nothing you're doing now surprises It's surprising, us. yeah. And so I'm just excited to see that. I've been consistently myself mm-hmm. and I haven't changed. I'm still very grounded, very stubborn, um, still still private. I think we talked about that earlier. I think I share enough for people to know me, but mm-hmm. they don't have to know me. No, I don't have to know all your Because I think, again, we grew up, we, we didn't have social media up right. until the recent 10, 15 years. And so I think you got to keep a little something for to yourself. yourself. You, know, you yes. got to tell it all. You don't have to show it all. And so, again, being consistently myself, um, I think that has paid off in a it, huge way. I, it definitely has. Just we're going to talk about how it's paid <laughs> off. I wanted to ask you, because from the outside looking in, yeah. I, my assumption was yeah. you started, like, painting. No. But it sounds like you started with fashion, with chopping and screwing and remixing yeah. outfits. So how did that translate yeah. into what you're doing now? So I think I always had a love for colorfulness, mm-hmm. um, customness, all those things. And so I taught myself how to paint during the snowstorm 2014. Okay. That was around Valentine's Day. Didn't have no boo. Home board. And I'm like, what am I going to do with my life, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm walking past that good old sorority. I had some um, arts and crafts from a project I was making for probate. And I was like, oh, what's in this box? And I was like, oh, I have some paint. And so I'm like, LOL, y'all. What are y'all doing while it's snowing? I'm painting. My friend's like, you ain't no pain. I was like, girl, I know. And so I'm, I'm like literally just, this is real time, doodling on wood, doodling on pieces of paper. And people were like, whoa, this is like a thing. Mm-hmm. You might need to start selling this. I'm like, this? I'm like, what y'all want me to do with mm-hmm. this? And so lo and behold, um, 10 or 15 pieces later, I'm able to give a gift to my mom to pay her mortgage for the month. And um, Shut up, I was selling paintings. Selling paintings. And so gradually I began to sell more and more. And... Um, I said, man, I need to figure out how to wear this stuff. Mm-hmm. Because I like right now my hair has conditioner on it. And so I'm And like, we would never know. We would never know. So I said, how am I gonna have conditioner on but make it to this event? And so I said, Oh, if I get the art on fabric, mm-hmm. I can wear it. And so that aha moment just really woke up my whole life. And what year was that? What year that was, was that? 2016, aha 17. Okay. And so that was the year that I said, one day Lupita will wear my head wrap. Come on, Lupita. And so I blindly DM'd her stylist. I was like, you know. Oh, you check. were serious? Oh, I was like, no, if I'm going to believe God for it, yes. I'm going to move. And so he DMs me back from London. And he was like, oh, she would love your stuff. I'm like, wait a minute, this is Lupita Lupita. He was like, yeah, you, you DM me, right? 
send her the head wraps. She shows up in Vogue magazine. Come um, on, Vogue. The rest is history. I and so that was my that. first viral, like, huge moment. And ever since then, can't keep them in stock. Okay, so <laughs> I think I kind of know the answer to this question. But did you ever deal with the doubts oh, God. of people who were like, but how are you going to just do this? Yeah. Because I think a lot of times they, people can know you're great at something. People oh, yeah. can love what you're doing, but they still can't connect yeah. the dots that this can be the yeah. way that you earn your living, the way that you make your name. So what were some of those tougher times, if there were any? The first person I had to convince was myself. Mm. Um, I couldn't believe that I could just be an artist. I just quit my job in, in February. Shut um, up. I was still working a full-time job. Shut your mouth. Past seven years. Like, I just quit, right? Wow. And okay. So, like, two days after I quit, I'm like... Wait okay, now what? Yeah. So what am I supposed to do now? Like, uh, and I was super anxious because I am the oldest child. My dad is not around, so if anything goes wrong, it's, it's you, my mama, right? Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, Lord, don't make me a fool. I don't tell people. Okay, quit your job. Okay, so now what? Mm-hmm. There's no steps to right, that. Right, right, right. So I quit my job, and I'm like going through the motions because when you quit, of course you have a plan. But even though I had money in the bank, it still felt like, what about insurance? What right. About this. And so fast forward. Maybe a few weeks after that, I go and donate some artwork to another HBCU, Clark Atlanta. And so a friend of mine was there from Atlanta Influences Everything. He's like, man, you're a good person. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. You know, I'm looking, I'm, I need some money. You know, in my mind, I'm like, yeah, but what does that equate to money? He was like, I need to introduce you to somebody. I'm like, oh, how you look? He's like, no, not a man, but like a friend. I'm like, okay, cool. I get into a uh, text thread with the, one of the man, lead managers for Foot Locker. Mm. And so he's like, well, just send me your stuff. You know, I'm like, oh, here we go. Just send me your stuff. Mm-hmm, email. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, I ain't gonna never hear from them. He's like, man, I'm thinking something happens. Like, Can I call you really quickly? It's like Sunday at two or three o'clock. I'm like, what do you want? He's like, you got something special. And he's like, I don't think this is a normal, like local thing. I think you need to be a global partner. Mm. So by that Monday, I signed a deal with Foot Locker. A few weeks after quitting my job. Blink, blink, blink. Yes. And so. That goes back to what you said. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. But if I'm going to trust God for it, gotta I'm going to move. Fully. But you got to give God something to bless. So the fact that you Quit. not just said, I'm going to do this, but you took the yep. action to do it. Yep. Those are the things that it's like confirmation. Like, I know this was nothing but God that connected these pieces that connected these dots. Um, And even to this day, I get like emotional because I was doubting myself for seven. Even with all the, oh, she did vote. And I was like, girl, I mean, OK, so you get all these high highs. Mm-hmm. Like the months in between the next win, you're like, girl, I only sold one. Like right now, I've only sold two paintings the past month. I'm like, well, I need some more. Mm-hmm. But the month before that, I sold over 20,000 to one person. Entrepreneurship. That's so, you the know, life so, of an entrepreneur. So when you're working your job, I know I'm getting them that $5,000 right. every month, no matter right. what. I could right. barely work them people's job and they're going to give me a check. Mm-hmm. But when you don't, when you making every dime yourself, you're like, I don't know if I can do this every month. That's yeah. a lot of work. Yeah. But now the freedom, I, I say all the time, the cost I pay to get my time back is is just priceless. I get to go do uh, I get to go do po- podcast interviews in the middle of the day. Yes, and then catch flights to go see Usher. Come on, Usher. Usher. Yes, um, and, freedom. And That's that the real is wealth. Something that no one can and ever give me back. Yep. Um, that time, that precious, those moments with your sisters, your sorors, your husband, your kids. You can't get that time back. Mm-hmm. So I could work really hard for 36 hours and then take the rest of the week off. Yep. The rest of the I month off if you want if I to. If the money right. Come on. <laughs> I, and that's something that I always talk about, too. It's like we always are talking about making the money. But yeah. my definition of wealth is freedom because yes. we know so many yes. rich people who don't even have time to enjoy life, don't or even have family. time to or their family to yeah. spend time, you know, doing the things that they actually love. So I love that you mentioned, you yes. know, the the freedom that it's opened yes. up for you. But you you having to really take that initiative and believe in what you what you're saying yeah, cuz it's deal. easy to say the stuff but when it comes time to walk away from that guaranteed paycheck i'm still it's a like different... who i should i said what well, they said cuz i still get recruiters cuz they don't mm-hmm. really know i'm out uh-huh. like well you know let us know it's, it's only paying 200 i said that's the easy that's a two, uh, yeah 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 i could just do the people job but it come with home. it come with some other oh, stuff it's you, some you, know, shackles now. you know and then they want you to not do nothing else exactly that, exactly the handcuffs yeah. um so you said you've always been confident enough in yourself to be different you've always yes. wanted to be you know custom and stand out from yes. the crowd there are so many people especially black women mm-hmm. we've had this conversation so many times on the show around imposter syndrome yes and you can be great like yes. in whatever you do and whatever your yes. area of expertise is but you still show up somewhere and you're doubting yourself yes. you're doubting your gifts you're mm-hmm. doubting your talents what advice do you have for someone who, you know, wants to be able to show up confidently? 
I, I look at it very morbidly, right? Um, I was the last person my father talked to before he passed away. I was on the phone not realizing that that was his last moment. And so I look at opportunities as life and death because if I have a life right now, if this is my last moment, what impact do I want to leave, right? And so I don't let other people dictate what my story is about to be. Um, even on days I don't have the most energy, I still show up because, like, what, is this, what if this is the last day? Mm -hmm. Do I want to show up in a hoodie and be sad or do I want to say, do hey. Do you ever show up in a hoodie? I, I've had a hoodie on this week. Okay. I, my hair looked a mess the other day. Okay. That's why I got no hair wrap. <laughs> um, but even then, my energy still fills the room. I went to, I was on set yesterday. They were like, you just so full of energy. I said, girl, if you knew the week I had. Right. And so every impact or encounter you have is a person's influence or their belief about God. So when you experience me, I want you to know that there is a God. Mm. I want you to know that there is there is hope on the other side of entrepreneurship. Um, there are good people in the world. And so I might be the only advocate for the other side of hope. And so I have to, like, carry that. So when I be in my in my feelings about stuff, I'm in a car like I'm, I'm my own coach. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. Like, girl, get your stuff together. Hyping, hyping yourself up. Yeah, because, I mean, you don't get a, you may not get a chance to do this again. You know. So you social media. Yeah. Um, super, super positive, you know, mindset yeah. being yeah, everything. <laughs> that, well, what I saw, I was 10% I'd be gossipy. She'd be listening, getting it. You know, yes, yes, I get into my tea every you, now we, all, we all get into the tea a little bit. A little bit. But how, what are some daily things aside mm -hmm. from like the, the self talk? Mm -hmm. What are some daily practices or mm -hmm. are there any daily practices yeah. that help you even on the hard days? Because, like you said, yeah. th this all looks great. Mm -hmm. This all looks great, yes. but there is still very much so life going on behind the scenes. Um, it's your tribe. Um, I know I, I had a really, so I don't know if you saw Pinky wore mm -hmm. my outfit I sure, the, Did I? On the red carpet. At the BT so Awards, yes, I sure did. We pulled did. that dress off in 36 hours. I saw. And so, so stressed out from that. And so I called my friend and he's like, I mean, you the star, ain't you? You want to do this, don't you? He said, "This is what you prayed for, didn't you?" I'm like, and I'm like, "Don't talk to me." I'm like, he's like, "Bro, I know you ain't crying." I was like, "I'm not crying, baby." I'm like, putting on me. I was like, "Oh my god." And he was like, "I'm not going to even allow you to call me with this because we've been talking about these moments, and so you finally get it, and you're crying. Like, are you serious right now?" He said, "Call a printer, call your seamstress." So like, he reminded me of who I who was. Who you are? Yeah. So if you don't have the right tribe, you if I call you crying too, like, dog, we can't, can't both be in here right, crying. Right, we right. could be at the at the printer right now, and so. Your tribe is important. Um, my screensaver on my phone are all of my goals for the year and my affirmation. I read it to myself every time I touch my phone. I have dream boards all over the house. Um, What's the difference between a dream board and a vision board? Or is it the same? Um, I think it's the same. Okay. I don't really, I mean, it's. I guess it's uh, tomato, tomato. Got you, okay. Um, it's my dream, but my vision, you know, to put it in semantics is what I see, but what I'm going to touch. So it's almost like my goal board. Got you, okay. Because I'm going to do these things, mm -hmm. right? It's not a dream at this point. I'm going to have these twins. I'm going to marry this Come man. on, twins. I think so, because I, I was around some kids the other day. They was talking a lot. I was two like, for one. You cannot be two they for one. Let me tell talking. you. I was like, do I really? Twins? Yes. Um, and yes. so I have. Kai has twins. Oh boy. So okay. So we're voting for no twins. No, we're voting for twins. Okay. We're gonna touch and in the so, green. So reminding myself of my vision all day long. Mm -hmm. um, get working out in some. Even if it's a ten minute ride on the Peloton, or if it's a just stretching, or just cutting every. Like I ride in the car in silence sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like I want to hear my heart breathe. Mm -hmm. I want to hear my chest going up and down. I want to hear myself breathing. I want to feel no noise, it. no distraction. But you just have to say, "Wait, I'm alive!" Like mm -hmm. you got to look at your your hands, your fingers, because you'll go so much in life. I don't know if you ever have this where, like, "Oh my God, I'm a person!" Like you mm -hmm, come outside mm -hmm. of your body, so you have to do that. Like you get another chance at this. God bless you. You're gonna be okay. And yes. so those three things, and then also grounding yourself. Like I'm a barefoot contestant. I'll be outside with no shoes on, sports bra. My neighbors like, "What is she got going on today?" <laughs> I'm pulling weeds out the yard, and so. Touching the earth reminds you that there's a God. There's a time for pruning. Things do grow back. When I'm thinking a flower has died, I add some water, it comes back. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really into gardening and plants and those things. And so finding things that make you happy that don't require money. Yes, happiness without money. Yeah. I love it. Yes. What would you say is the key to maintaining amazing relationships? Because you mentioned mm -hmm. Pinky yes. at the BET Awards. Yes. Um, I've seen you Vogue, obviously. Yes. I've yes. seen you do stuff with... Yes. Um, Amazon, yes. Essence, yes. Uh, Jet Mag, yes. I think like last week. I didn't yes. even know Jet Mag was, was still around. I, was, I did my research. I did yes. my research. Okay. I did my research. Okay. But I've seen you doing all the things, yeah. and I know that a lot of those opportunities come. Well, not a lot. All oh, opportunities yep. come through people. Yep. Blessings come from God, but they come through people. I know that mm -hmm. to be fact. So how do you connect, maintain, and sustain those relationships? 
I think having honest interactions and don't come with your hand out. Um, and that's what really gets on my nerves with people where they'd be like, oh, can you listen to this? Can you do this? I said, you didn't even ask me how my day Hello, was. how are you? Yeah. You know, and so I'm really a big motivator. Like, I'll see a slutty vegan truck. I'm like, Pinky, look, I saw your truck. She's mm-hmm. like, girl, you're so crazy. Like, just just everyday interactions. Like, if I made a friend at Essence, you know, just thank you. I'm a big affirmation pers- um, person. My love language is after gifts is affirmation. Mm-hmm. And so I'm always like, girl, you look really good today. You're like, oh, and so leaving those positive interactions with people, you'll always be top of mind. Mm-hmm. I'm also a gift giver. I have something for you. Come on, guys. I got uh, something for you too, girl. Oh, look at us. And so I'm a gift giver. Um, I'm loyal. I'm honest. I don't just take things just because they come to my doorstep. Um, I don't take every interview. I don't take every deal. And so people respect that. Like, wow, she could have made a lot of money with them and she didn't, mm-hmm, she didn't mm-hmm. bow to that. And so really saying like, they see my character outside. I'm consistent. I'm cons- I've been on the same thing for eight or nine years. Like, uh, if you go to my post all the way to that's stuff, tough. That's a thing. It's consistency. Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs, like, as soon as they don't see the results they want we in 30 days, on. they're like, okay, I ain't doing this positive stuff no more. Mm-hmm. I'm back to selling drugs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so they don't stay the course. And so I've stayed the course. And people are like, wow, I've watched you. The first thing people say is, like, I've been watching you. Mm-hmm. I'm like, who, me? So I don't I don't get caught up in likes. Sometimes I just cut the likes off because I'm like, it's ain't for nobody. Doesn't matter. Yep. But that person with three followers and two posts, is a VP at Jet Magazine. Mm-hmm. He's a VP at Essence. And so you never know whose stuff your your posts end up with. Yeah. And so that's why I'm like, I'm just going to be myself. So if it's good for you, cool. If it's not, that's even I'm better. still me. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so speaking of relationships, <clears throat> you know crown. this is Girl Stop Playing. Adjust your crown. Okay. Yes. Okay. This is Girl Stop Playing. We love talking about the business, but we also love getting in your business. But we ain't going to get too deep. Okay, I'm a tourist. She's a, tour- so I I got she's a tourist, y'all. It's always a block. So we not going to get too it's deep. It's always a block. But yeah. I do really yeah. love at least grazing the yes. topic because mm-hmm. so many women we they're inundated with the business conversation with yes. the making money conversation yes. but women want more than money you know yes. like we i always say i need some honey to go with my money like we need yes. the other side of yes. it so what's your relationship status um i do have somebody that i like a lot um and i mentioned before i feel like the person that you pursue are you allowing your space as an artist mm-hmm. um they have to be your muse because when I'm creating, I shouldn't come home and feel stressed out mm-hmm. about your energy being there. And I'm really big on, I, don't, I have never had a house warming because I didn't want people in my house warming my house. You know. It's already warm. You know. And so that I comes, made this warm. Yeah, this is warm. It's always warm. And so I think we talked about earlier, if I had to choose other than the word peace for my relationships, it has to be an inspiration. Mm. Because I want to draw from what the relationship gives me. And so I should feel, I should feel inspired to do more. I should feel inspired to want to be more as a woman. Um, I should be inspired to want to have your children. Mm-hmm. I should be inspired to want to build with you. And so if I don't feel those things, um, I usually feel that in the first interactions. Um, and my friends always complain about dating. There's no one here. And I said, well, your confession is ain't no good man. Why you think it ain't no good man? I meet somebody every time I leave my house. Mm-hmm. Because I do believe who you that. meet is a re- uh, reflection of who you are. So it may not be the husband that mm-hmm. I need, but I meet someone all the time, and so I'm never discouraged about girl. Ain't no men out here. I'm so there's plenty of men. Mm-hmm. Now the one I want might be finished being chiseled, but I'm not discouraged about the the men that are out there. Um, and I'm not afraid to say what I do and don't want. And I'm not hard about. it. I'm like, hey, listen, this is what I offer, and I'm leaving on the table, and I'm going back downstairs. Mm-hmm, You're more mm-hmm. than welcome to come on with me, but. And I think you just have to walk away with that just doesn't, not only doesn't serve you, but doesn't serve your future you. Mm-hmm. Because the Melissa, the mogul that continues, every year I'm getting better. So if you can't really love and be confident enough to, to walk that walk. with you, yeah. Then it's just not going to work. Okay. Hey, boo, we're going to see him one day. But in the meantime, she's like, no day. Mm-hmm. On wedding day. We'll yeah. see him on wedding day. Like, I didn't know she had a baby and three kids. You Where know, these kids came you from? Know, yeah, pop yeah. out. Yeah, pop yeah. out. Okay, so before we let you go, we got to play. Ooh. Pull, yo, car- we got to get like some graphics that's like, Okay, I'm real so competitive. Let's we are gonna goes. do okay. trivia. Oh boy. Okay, so Can't I'm Google. gonna let you. Oh boy. Um, just pick three cards. Just point to them. This one. That one. Okay. And then we're gonna do this one. Okay. And then we're one gonna more. Do this one. Okay. Uh oh. All right. Here we go. She picked her own poison. Oh, this one's easy. Question number one. And if she gets them wrong, y'all. Drop her some hints in the comments, okay? She can't see them. She it won't help her, but okay, it'll be just fun future, for me to see future, yeah. future reference. Um, okay, so where is Bruno Mars's condo? Girl, I don't know. In the sky? I don't. Know. 
Where is it? Manhattan. I got a condo in Manhattan. Baby oh, girl, girl what's I'm happening? not good. Go ahead. Okay. I've been listening to Anita Baker. Okay. Where, where Anita Baker house at? Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to do well. Next I can question. It. It's okay. You're going to do better well. on this one. You're going to do better on this one. We hope. Who played Martin Lawrence's sister in Bad Boys 2? You've seen Bad Boys 2. I know you have. Not Gabrielle Union. Okay. Whew. I didn't know that was a Okay. Girlfriend. All right. I knew it was a black woman. What out of two? What out of two? Okay. 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 You know this one, too. It's okay. You know this one, too. What did Kevin Hart go to school and say to his teacher? Oh, shoot. Um, I don't know. I make more money than you? I don't know. School. Teacher. Y'all tell us in the comments. I'm not even going to give you this answer. But tell us I'll in the Google comments, y'all. I get in the comments. Tell us in the comments because I know somebody out there knows it. But this makes me happy because when I created these, I'm like, maybe these questions are too easy. You they have aren't. proven you have proven that they are not. We played Heads Up the other day. I was I was stood up the entire time. You know the where they play yes, the game? that's one of my games in here, too. Okay, so it's just funny how people can be brilliant, but yes, when it's time to play yes. a game, like, oh, shoot, like, oh, When the spotlight comes ABCD, on. A, B, C, D, F, you're like, uh, it's, it's you know, okay. you're alphabet. Yeah. You're brilliant and amazing in yeah, so many other fine. ways, so we're not it's gonna fine. hold it against okay, you. Fine. Let the people know, though, aside from Foot Locker, because your girl <laughs> is in Foot Locker, <laughs> but bit, aside from bit. Foot Locker, where can we find your beautiful creations yes. and how can we um, stalk your social media? So, um, I say this very humbly, you can Google me. <laughs> Google um, Melissa A. Mitchell, artist. Um, there'll be about 20 or 30 pages, humbly speaking. Um, but also my website, MelissaAMitchell.com. I'm on Instagram all the time, running my mouth. At but AB not telling your business. But not telling my business. <laughs> uh, ABL Creations is A-B-E-I-L-L-E -L -L -E Creations. And... Of course, Foot Locker, Amazon. I have a, a partnership with Shade Room. Come on, Shade Room. Shade Room Shop. I am so with Flourish. Come on, Flourish. Also with Flourish. Um, I have a capsule collection coming out again. I'll be announcing that on my Instagram page. But if you follow me, you'll know. And so, yeah, just follow me along for the ride. You'll get to see all the good things God are doing. Uh, God is doing. And also, I have a billboard currently in Times Square oh. with my face with no head wrap. I'm Congratulations. Gonna, uh, imagine that. Um, but yeah, it's just an amazing ride. And I would love to take you along with me. I love it. I love all of this <laughs> good energy, y'all. And listen, your page, it, it it's like Boom. coming out of yes. your phone. Yes. Um, so I love it. I appreciate you for spending some time thank here you. at the show. And y'all, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Girl Stop Playing. This was such a good conversation. You got to share this episode with a friend. All right. Tell a friend to tell a friend to get in where they fit in. See yep. you on the next episode. Bye. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that video. This channel is all about encouraging you to stop playing with your potential and start working for what you want in life and in love. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you'll be notified when the next video drops. And comment below and let me know what you want to see on the next video. Peace out.